Okay, what we're going to put together this time is a six-step Geneva sequencer. And basically, there's three parts you print out. This main frame plate, this Geneva part here, and this cam part. And here's one assembled and screwed onto the uh, dual drive base that you've seen in my other video. Connected to uh, a three volt supply. And the main uh, goal of this is that whenever we trigger the Geneva, it should go to a, a new position, perform a new function. In this case, every time I trigger it, well, right now it's in the off position, so that's position one. When I trigger it, it'll then go forward. This is the front, so it'll go that way. When I trigger it again, then it'll, it'll either turn left or right, I forget which way. And when I trigger it again, then it'll go forward in that direction, so it allows you to select a new direction, trigger it again, turn the other way, trigger it forward, until it comes back around to the stop position. And this would be the trigger wire to positive. So every time I trigger it, this cam should rotate one revolution and stop, which will advance the Geneva. So there's forward. I triggered it again, there's the turn. I'll trigger it again. It'll be forward in that direction. Trigger it again. If I didn't uh, have the wires fall off. Trigger it again and there's the turn. Trigger it again, there's the forward. Trigger it again, we're back to stop. What's this going to allow us to do is use different remote control type devices to uh, sequence this toy so that you can steer it in all directions. Okay, so to build this sequencer, Again, I'm just going to use uh, one of these common, I can't really see the camera, let me see, flip the screen around, the common little uh, drive motors, but we do have to do one thing to it. Most of them have a strap that holds the motor on. You need to remove that strap, and on the side, see the one side will have a, a little tit sticking out, and so one side doesn't. On the side that doesn't, you need to cut all of that plastic hook piece off so it's perfectly smooth. And remove the motor, put a little bit of glue on the sides of the motor and shove the motor back into the housing with the battery contact sides on the tit side. What's that? That's going to allow us to bolt this to the bottom of this frame flat with no gap. If that mounting uh, clamp was there, that would hold it up. You know, I want it all the way flat. And if you left the battery contacts on this side, it'd be really hard to solder wires to it. So that's why we flipped the motor over and, and glued it in place. To hold the motor, again, if you're in America, just find yourself some 632 screws, like 632 by 3 8 or something like that. These happen to be half an inch long, which are way longer than what you need. And they'll screw right into the motor and hold everything together. If you're anywhere else in the world, it's not critical. The hole goes all the way through. You can run a long bolt and put a nut on there. Uh, you could even use a wood screw. The only thing you have to make sure is whatever screw you put in there doesn't damage the, uh, the gearbox. If you uh, deform the plastic or anything like that too much, then the gearbox will jam up and, and won't run. And once you put the motor on, it's usually a good idea before you go any further just to make sure that the gearbox motor does in fact still run and isn't jammed up. Because I've buggered up a couple of them by not paying attention or by not cutting all that little thing off, left just a little bit of that nub. That applies enough pressure to the gearbox that it jams the gears up in there. So if you mount uh, that on like that, then you take this cam piece and you can put that right onto the motor and find yourself, again I'm using a uh, number two about three eighths long self tapping screw but anything that will tap into the uh, hole that's in the end of the motor shafts all the motor shafts have a hole in the end of them find something that will tap into that and you'll be good to go so let's just test the motor that far and make sure everything is working. I'm going to move my 3 volt supply over to save time. I've already soldered uh, the wires on there. Keep the video as short as possible. 
So there as you can see the motor's turning freely, no problem. And what I have done is I've wired the motor, I ran ground from the battery right up to the motor, then I took the other wire off the motor, you want the motor turning clockwise, and I've run it through this uh, switch, and I've run it through the contacts that will make it normally closed. And what that means is when nothing's touching the switch, it's a closed connection, so the motor would run, which is what you just saw. But as soon as this cam comes around and hits the switch, then it should stop. So what that'll allow us to do is every time we give this a positive voltage pulse, no matter how brief, it'll rotate one, one time around and stop, which is what we want. So let's hook this uh, battery back up again. As you can see, it's already come to a stop. If I take the yellow wire here and pulse it, once around and stop. And it's touching. <clears throat> so, onto that whole mechanism then goes the main Geneva part, which is going to be easier to put on if I rotate that a little bit, like so. And what's going to keep that from falling off, in this case is I'm using, again, a uh, number two by about three eighths long with a washer on top. And you should be able to screw that down all the way. Well, it shouldn't find, so it should stay free. So now anytime we, if I lay this down, can you see? Can you guys see that? It makes it easier for me. Then every time I pulse it, the Geneva will advance. I'll try and get it up here a little closer for you. See? So that's how the sequencer works, and on this one that you saw me running at the beginning, the only thing that's different, I'll hold this in the same position that I was holding that so you're not confused as to what you're seeing. I've added three other switches which allow me to control these motors. These switches I have, they're all wired exactly in the same way in that they're in the normally closed position. So what happens is when this little lever on the Geneva here comes around and hits one, it's actually opening that switch. This first switch I made to interrupt all power to both motors, the main V+. plus. So when that gets where it is right now, nothing's running. Remember that's where it had stopped when I was done with that part of the video. When it goes to the next position, which if I just move this by hand, now nothing, none of the switches are being touched, so they're all normal and closed, so that means both motors will be running. So that means my platform would go forward. If you advance it to the next one, it's now contacted this switch. This would open, because like I said, they were all wired normally closed. This would be to this motor, and now that it's hit, it is no longer normally closed. Now it's an open circuit. So now that motor is off and this one's on, so the platform turns. So you can see every time the Geneva moves, I have it alternate. Now it would be back running forward again, whatever new position we selected. Next position is going to come to this switch. And that would turn this one off. The next position would be back to forward. And the next position would be to off. This will give us a way to control uh, these toys using some electromechanical remote control circuits that I want to uh, share with you all. Of course, you can modify this to do anything you want. It doesn't have to be switches. You could hook linkage off of it or do whatever you want to do. Or you could add more switches because you could modify this file. Um, one thing about the switches, I am using roller switches here. But I have found by, by having ordered more roller switches, they're not all the same. The, the length of where the little roller is and the length of the arm varies. And if it gets too far off, you can't get things to line up right and work right. I think the switches with the long flat lever would be better because then you can bend the lever around to where it, it contacts and hits things right and then just cut off the excess amount of the lever. So the, the long flat non-roller ones are probably going to be a lot easier for you to set up because, like I say, last time I tried to order some more of these I couldn't even get these exact same ones. The roller wheel was in a slightly different position and then things don't line up right. So. This is part two 
of the new uh, build that I think you're going to find very interesting as we move forward is the sequencer. And this was the dual drive base. 